Number 31. The following ionic compounds are found in common household products. Write the formulas for each compound. All right. So basically they're saying that they're all ionic. So chances are that we're going to have to use the crisscross method. Now they're household common names, which means that they might not follow the standard uh, nomenclature that we have been talking about thus far. But if that's the case, I'll, I'll let you guys know when that happens. But let's, let's, let's start this, all right? So for A, we want to name potassium phosphate. Okay, so if we're talking about ionic compounds, we need to use the crisscross method, and this comes from the oxidation states. So I'll just put ox states, a.k.a. the charges, right? The, the guys in the upper right-hand corner. So we need to just remember the oxidation states trend. So the oxidation state trend is only for main group elements. There's no trend for transitions. So it's only going to be for group 1 and 2 and 13 all the way to 18, all right? So the oxidation state trend goes as such, plus 1 plus two, plus three, plus or minus four, negative three, negative two, negative one, and zero. Those are the charges when what these atoms want when they bind to form a compound. Now, for here, they're telling us that it's potassium phosphate. So potassium is K, and K is in group one, so it should be a plus one charge. So I'm going to put that here. Now, Phosphate, if you look on the periodic table, nowhere would you ever find a phosphate on here. So that's a little defeating. But anytime that you see an 8 ending or an um, I ending, so A-T-E or an I-T-E, that means that it's not going to be on the periodic table. It's actually a polyatomic ion. And I made a list for you guys here. These are common ones that you should memorize, but there are more. There's a chart in your textbook, and I, I put it in a couple of questions from, from time to time, so you might, have, might as well seen it. Um, memorize that chart. Memorize these polyatomics, because sometimes teachers and professors won't give that information to you. So it's just easier to memorize it. So I just know from memorizing what phosphate is, Phosphate is always PO4 with the three minus charge. So you need to know that phosphate is always going to have one phosphorus, four oxygens, and the overall charge is a negative three. So for all of these, the polyatomic will never ever change. So if you can memorize, you know, phosphate is this, sulfate is this, you guys would be golden for not only nomenclature, but it's going to come back, I promise you. Chemistry is very cumulative. So we're going to crisscross now, which means that we take these charges and we crisscross them down to tell how many of each we need. So this one will crisscross down, telling me that I only need one phosphorus or one phosphate. Sorry about that. And this negative three crisscrosses down. So it'll crisscross down to tell me that I need three potassiums. Now, just take note that when I crisscross, I don't put a plus one and I don't put a minus three. I just take the absolute value. And when you do that, the charges disappear. This is kind of just like a trick. So now you can kind of see the formation of your um, compound here. So it would be K3. And now I only need one phosphate, so I don't need Roman numerals. So it would just be K3PO4. And that would be the answer for the first one. So potassium phosphate is K3PO4, and A is done. Moving on, we have B. Copper 2 sulfate. Okay, well, copper is over here, right? Actually, that is not copper, that's cobalt. This one is copper, Cu, right? So copper is Cu, and we need to do the crisscross method. So copper is Cu, so I'm going to put Cu. Now, I don't know what charge this is, right? There's no oxidation trend here, but that's why they gave you a Roman numeral. The Roman numeral is always the charge of the metal. Charge of metal. 
So by saying that th this is a two, that means that copper was a plus two charge. Metals will always have a plus charge. All right. So that's why copper is a plus two. And now they're telling me that it's bound with sulfate. And once again, I see an ATE ending. That means that it's not going to be on the periodic table. It's going to be a polyatomic that you probably have to memorize. And here it is. Sulfate is SO4 with the two minus charge. So I'm just going to put that here. SO4, two minus. And now we are ready to crisscross. This two from copper tells me that I need two sulfates. This two from sulfate tells me that I need two coppers. And remember with ionic compounds, you will always simplify if you need to. So if you have numbers that can break down to even simpler numbers, you will simplify ionic compounds. Covalent compounds, just know that you will never simplify, all right? So that's the difference there. So with two and two, you can divide each one by two, right? Two divided by two is one, and two divided by two is one. And since you have a one, that's an empirical formula. That's the most simplified form. So I only have one copper and I have one sulfate. So this would just be CuSO4. And that's the end for B. So now let's erase this. And if you guys need more time writing stuff down, you could always pause this video. All right. But I'm just trying to go quick just to, you know, not waste too much of your time. But I want to kind of get it down so that you guys understand. All right, so C, we have calcium chloride. Okay, well, calcium is a metal, it's right here, and it should be a plus two. So we're gonna do the crisscross method because it's a metal, and we know that calcium is a plus two. Chloride comes from chlorine, and chlorine is over here. Chlorine should be a minus one. So that's the charge for chlorine. And now we crisscross. So this two tells me that I should have two chlorines. This one tells me that I need one calcium. And I already have a one here, so the compound is simplified. And I just get CaCl2. And that's the answer for C. CaCl2. And C's done. D, titanium dioxide. Well, this is weird, right? I say that because titanium is a transition metal. It's right here. But just like with the copper, right? Did they give me a Roman numeral? No, right? There's no Roman numeral here. But how am I going to know what the charge of titanium is? But then I start seeing other weird stuff, right? I see that there's dioxide. And di, just like di, tri, tetra, you know, penta, et cetera, et cetera, um, that's covalent compounds. That's not ionic, but this is an ionic compound because I have a metal here. So what does that mean? This is one of the exceptions where they told you that it was a common household product. So this is actually a common name. So there is no nomenclature that we do, like with I, IUPAC, there should have been a Roman numeral here, but this is common. If it's common, then you just call it as you see it. They said that it was titanium, so that's TI. They didn't tell you that it was, you know, mono or di or tri or tetra, so you assume that there's only one, but in this case, there's dioxide. What does di mean in chemistry? Two, right? So how many oxygens do you have, right? Remember, because oxygen, oxide is oxygen. Oh, so I have two oxygens. So this would just be TiO2. So this one was where you have a common name and not the standard IUPAC that we've been working with. So that's the answer for that one. Now let me just erase quick and move on to E. Ammonium nitrate. All right, well, ammonium, if I look anywhere on here, I would never see ammonium. Uh-oh. But have no fear. That means we're using a polyatomic. And ammonium is a polyatomic. Ammonium is NH4 plus 1. So this is NH4 plus 1. And now look at nitrate. I have the ATE ending, so that means that it's a polyatomic. 
and nitrate is right here. Nitrate is always NO3 minus 1. So I can just write this as NO3 minus 1. And now I have two charges where I can crisscross. So this is also another example of ionic bonding. When you have two polyatomics, you will have both ionic bonding and covalent bonding. So this plus one tells me that I have only one nitrate. This minus one tells me that I only have one ammonium. So one and one, I don't need any parentheses. So this would just be NH4, NO3. And that would be the answer for this one, NH4, NO3. And then last but not least, we have sodium bisulfate, the common name for sodium hydrogen sulfate. So I'm just going to write sodium hydrogen sulfate, because that's the IUPAC name. Sodium is a metal, right? That's right here, Na. And Na is a, or should be, a plus one charge. So I can say that sodium is an Na with the plus one. But now, what about this hydrogen sulfate? That's really weird. But remember, you can only have two things. As you've been noticing with all of these, you always have one thing that's positive and one thing that's negative. You're never going to have three or more stuff inter, you know, coming together. So that means that this whole thing should be one whole, you know, ion. And hydrogen sulfate is another one of your polyatomic ions. It's HSO4 minus one. So I can say that. HSO4 minus one. And now I'm ready to crisscross. The positive one tells me I only need one hydrogen sulfate. The negative one tells me I only need one sodium. These cancel out when they're done. And then it's just a one to one. So it'd just be NaHSO4. And that's your answer for F. NaHSO4. Box that answer off, and we are done with number 31. How exciting, all right? So hopefully this helped. If you need more practice, you could always check out the questions before this, and there's a couple more after this. So if you're on the playlist, stay tuned because we'll be doing more of this in number 32, all right? So thank you so much. If, if you want, you can hit subscribe. That would help the channel out. Um, you can like this video. And yeah, keep studying hard. Have an awesome day. See you in the next question.